What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we have, of course, the Giro d'Italia finale. I've got my Amalia Rosa on and that is what we are chasing today and we have plenty of mountains to try and go after it. I say that though, but we are some way off. We have just over four and a half minutes with both Tobias Johannesson and Anton Sharmik, our two GC guys at the Giro this year. We are chasing Tom de Moulin, and more importantly, I believe, Juan Ayuso, who is a unbelievable talent for UE Team Emirates, the Spaniard, 20 years old, and he is the man to beat. And so, five stages coming up today, the first of which looks to be a sprint stage, maybe some climbs to the end could uh, cause that not to be the case, but then, stage 18, we have one of the final big mountain stages, finishing on the Panorotta, average of 7.6%. Then stage 19, which is a mountain time trial, 19 kilometers long. And that is going to be a pivotal day for sure in this GC race. And then stage 20, the GC finale, where we have to make our move. And it's on none other than the Monte Zoncalan. We of course finish with the sprint stage into Trieste on stage 21, but we will know the winner of the Malia Rosa beforehand. So we've had plenty of stage victories so far. Could we add another today with maybe Chris Halvorsen? So it's a small breakaway today, six riders to be exact, and I'm pretty sure this is set to be a mass sprint like I mentioned. I'm not sure though if the Muro di Ca del Poggio is enough to maybe drop some of the purest sprinters. And you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's really try and make this a difficult one. Let's put our guys up to the front. I've got Stornamite and Anders Janssen here. Let's make it difficult if no one else is going to relay 92, 95 on the front on the climb here. And the question now is, can we create some splits? It doesn't really seem so. I'm not sure this is going to be worth pressing on, guys. Although I say that, suddenly we have 10 k to go and it is go time. Let's try and work for Halvorsen. So 5k to go. Is this going to be another stage for Chris Halvorsen? Sam Bennett has a really nice lead out seemingly. I'm going to trust my guys though. 3.5k to go. We have Kron and Tiller both on good days. And today we are literally right at the front. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Don't get blocked. And Kron hopefully is going to put Tiller and then Halvorsen respectively in the perfect position. 1.5. Let's go now. Halvorsen follows the wheels into that final kilometer. Can we kick for the line? We're getting blocked in a little bit with Chris and it's not quite going to be our day. Instead, Elia Viviani takes the win. It's a top five for us. Not a bad result and almost a little bit more. Bit of a shame. Like I said, a what could have been story today, but nice to see Viviani on the top step. And so it begins. The climbing begins and we need to be on the front foot. We're not interested in finishing third and fourth. I'd rather risk losing one of these riders out the top 10 and try and go for the win and settle for third place. Let's go all out on the attack. And so the tactic, like the previous mountain stages, has to be just to stack the breakaway with as many riders as we can. Sadly, it seems Sharmik has just lost his form at the wrong moment, which means, though, we can try and use him as a decoy for Tobias, who really is our leader, I think. And we're trying, we're trying to stack the breakaways, but now Wanoyuso's team sent sensibly not too happy with this situation as we have three riders here. All right, I think we take this situation. They're allowing the 14 rider group up the road. We have Kron, Anders, and Tiller, who's going to work in this group for the other two guys. Let's get it. So I'm trying to work out if we should even try to attack on the Paso San Pellegrino right here. But I think we're, I think it's just best to wait for the later climbs today. It's just too long to go until the line. That would be too aggressive, even for me. So it does go without saying really, but part of the advantage of having Tiller up the road and being this good a climber is that he can take uh, the points at the intermediate sprint and extend that lead in the Chiclamino jersey. He is looking very good there now. And this is definitely quite a big game for him. Bad moment for Jefferson Alexander Cepeda as well, the current wearer of the mountain jersey, even though he's just behind uh, Juan Ayuso. He's in the top 10 in the GC, and his team, they're not helping him for some reason. So we're in the clouds already as we head towards the Paso del Redibus, and it is Rasmus Tiller driving the tempo in the breakaway. Still, we have seven and a half minutes, and I am even wondering 
if we should chase this stage with Anders Johansson. It would be lovely to get him his first Grand Tour victory. And yikes, this climb is steep in the breakaway. Tiller now struggling to hold the electric rhythm set by the Norwegian Andreas Lettnesen. He's feeling good today. So the only time the tempo really has up to date is in this descent. And now we just have 62 riders to the front. I can't see any big GC guys caught out today. Everyone important, I think, is still to the front of this race. And you UAE, maybe they still want the stage. They're upping the tempo massively. But here we go. The breakaway reached the Panarotta at the front of the race. And it is time to turn the screw. And yes, I am trying to aim, I think, for a stage victory with Anders. If not, of course, he is going to be a satellite rider for our leader, Tobias. And now we're here. Boy, oh boy, is the rhythm tough. Fitbit Scott all over the front of this race. I guess Hamilton feeling very, very good today. I must admit, guys, this climb isn't going too well right now. Ben O'Connor has just attacked from the peloton. No more GC attacks, though. Wanayuso, of course, still in this group, just waiting. We're just trying to get to the front. Sharmake is struggling today on this minus one tiller. He is on his way back to the peloton to help out whilst Kron giving Anders his final bits of energy with Lorenzo Fortunato at the head of the race. All right, 6K to go. We have 36 riders in the GC group. There goes Chris Hamilton. And Sharmik, guys, I think he might be dropping out the top five at least today. Like I said, really, really struggling is the poor man. Kron almost back in the group now as well. Anders is with Lettnesen and Pernsteiner, but Fortunato, I think, sadly, has this stage wrapped up. Let's make one final push towards him, if we can, with Anders, and let's concentrate on the GC group. All right, so 4K to go. We haven't been able to utilise Sharmeg as I'd hoped, and Sam Uman really blocking our rider there. That's not ideal at all. As Tobias tries to turn the screw, Sharmeg is going to drop plenty of time today. Tiller can maybe protect him for a little bit, um, whilst Tobias is using Andreas Kron to help him out. And where is Ayuso? He's blocked a little. Is he struggling? 3k to go at the front. And Anders trying to catch Lorenzo Fortunato. Sadly, I don't think it is going to be his day at the Giro. I think Fortunato has this one, guys. Yeah, there it is. Fortunato celebrates a great ride by Anders Johansson. He will be second on the Panarossa ahead of our former rider in Andreas Lettnesen. But Ayuso is here. And to Mulan. Dumoulin is in trouble. We have 1k to go. Let's up this now to 80. Great ride by Andreas Kron. And look, Ayuso, was he struggling there? Can we find a gap behind Pavel Sivakov? Kron moves over and Tobias is on one of his best days at the Giro this year. But so is Ayuso again. Miguel and her Lopez again. We're actually going to beat Juan Ayuso today and finish, hopefully, with Miguel and her Lopez and Hugh Carthy. Good signs, but it's not quite the four and a half minutes we needed to Ayuso, although we do gain more time to Tom de Moulin. What a stage, epic stage in the mountains again, but Lorenzo Fortunato is the mountain goat of the day. Four quick step, Anders denied by the Italian. Would have been a Norwegian 1-2 without him in that breakaway, but Tobias, he does gain time on Juan Ayuso, and he gains much more time, almost a minute, to Tom de Moulin, putting him third place in that GC still. Um, the gap is closing slowly. We need more than this though, of course. Hermann Pernsteiner is now fourth place in the GC after finishing fourth on the stage. What a move by him. Fortunato up to sixth, Zana seventh. All of these guys from that breakaway. Lopez has been nowhere at this Giro and Garrett Thomas, he drops outside the top 10. For Anton Charmig, does this now give him the chance to really attack the breakaways? I hope so. But this one is one I've been dreading, I would say. The Chima Grappa, it's a 19 kilometer climb and it's an individual time trial. The Giro could be lost today if someone's on a bad day, let's get it. I mean, first up guys, wow, this time trial is an absolute brute. And look at the time differences we have on show. Hal Vorsen, 83rd place currently, is 11 minutes down. I know he's a sprinter, but this day really can make or break your race. I'm trying to really go steady in this first section and try to save as much energy as possible for the climb and let's see it. Tobias about to get underway. It's not a bad race day condition to be fair and let's focus every kilometer on Tobias here. So first checkpoint is now for Tobias. We're 40th place. That is okay. Let's put him 
I'll try and go 70 from the foot of this climb and see how we're doing. And is coming towards the top, of course. But let's check the riders around us. We have Fortunato here, Hugh Carthy and Pernstein ahead of us. We've even beaten Tom's Mulan at that first checkpoint. Let's check on Juan Ayuso and see where he is. He is 12th place. What a rider. So Kron is going to finish his TT. He's 20th place in the GC and he got 6th place. That's a really good time by Kron so far. But of course we have all of the climbers coming right now. Sivakov 3rd, Thomas 2nd, Lopez is 1st at that 2nd split. Tobias still waiting and we're holding off to Mulan for now. So we're doing okay. Here we go then, Tobias at the 2nd split. Where are we? We're 10th place. It's just behind Herman Pernstein. It's not the best time in the world. I'm pretty sure of that. Let's slow it briefly on that flatter section. Push it again up to maybe 73. We need to make up some time. De Mulan is 12th place. We're ahead of Tom De Mulan right now. But Ayuso has almost caught Tom De Mulan, guys. So I think Miguel Angel Lopez is about to set the best time. And he does by a massive 42 seconds. If only he showed that form earlier on at this Giro d'Italia and we are struggling for energy now with Tobias I'm afraid I've over pushed this and Sharmake is going to be caught by Chris Hamilton across the line it's not a great end to the Giro seemingly he loses three minutes and 50 seconds so Herman Pernstein are starting behind us in the GC. It's 1 minute 51 down. Zana loses 8 minutes and 21 seconds. And Ayuso now even has Tobias Haaland, Johansson in his sights. Let's try and go to 70 for these final painful 400 meters. Even more across the line up to 85 and 99. There we go and we lose 3 minutes and 15 seconds to Miguel Angel Lopez. Juan Ayuso just misses out on the stage. De Mulan is going to lose 2 minutes 45. I've just seen the GC. Miguel Angel Lopez has won a stage. He's won a time trial at the Giro, guys. And to be honest, it's actually realistic. He wins it and he moves up ahead of us now in the GC. What has happened? We were on the podium. We're sixth place now, a minute and a half off of Hugh Carthy. De Mulan now four minutes behind Ayuso and he is surely going to win his first Grand Tour here. But we need some making up to do with one more mountain stage coming up. And this is it, the Monte Zoncalan, the final chance for the GC contenders. Let's do it. Let's get on that podium at least. But we do wear white with Tobias, which looks nice at least, I guess. Again, we're going to have to try and join the breakaway with numerous riders today. Let's get Cron uh, up the road as well. Maybe Anders too. Let's throw him up the road. I'd love Stornamite as well. If we can get him there. All right, I've gone all out, guys. I've gone completely all out. Anton Sharmik is now bridging to the breakaway. I think Tiller, is he going to drop back and help him? Probably not. He should be able to get in by himself. And hopefully, this now puts us in a really strong position with so many riders up the road. Hopefully, this sticks. So, unfortunately, I've eventually had to give up on having Sharmik in the breakaway. They were literally caught. People weren't happy with that move. Fair enough, I guess. He is 10 minutes down in the GC. And finally, I think the day's breakaway has gone. It's nine riders. We've got Kron Johansson and Storna Mete Cepeda is here. Fabro Zana. It's a very good group, as you would expect, despite it not being too big. So, now my question. We're on the Paso del Poro. The breakaway have built up a five-minute buffer to the Peloton of course trying to recover after that huge chase earlier in the stage my question is though do I attack before the zone clan we know how difficult it is it would be an all or nothing move and it would have to come off that's for sure you know what screw it we need to make this race difficult and that is what I'm going to do Rasmus Tiller has come to the front the breakaway already falling apart Stornamite is struggling Johannesson he's going to have to drop back as well Kron he can push on with the other strongest riders in this group but we need to make this tough for Tobias, let's go for it. And Andreas Kron, we could be costing him a chance at the stage victory here today. I don't know. We could be. I hope we're not. All right, Chris Halvorsen has crashed. If anyone was going to in our team, I would choose him today, I'm afraid, Chris. All right, the Seller Razzo is underway. We're heading to 1,800 metres above sea level. And it really feels good to finally really be trying to take the race on in the breakaway. I haven't quite felt that we've been able to do that so far at this race. Anders still up the road. He's going to drop back and wait for us. Same with Kron, I think, later on, which is a great scenario for us. He can maybe try and chase Felina as well for now 83 riders left in the peloton with riders dropping all the time and to be fair it's ef now who have taken it to the front for hugh carthy in third place maybe chasing a fading tom de moulin 
for that second place spot. So current situation, 30 riders are left in the Peloton up the road. We still have Kron towards the head of the race. He's doing really well today with Fabio Fellina now. Uh, still those two guys, the strongest. Fabro Scusian's just behind and Tij Benut is absolutely flying in this descent for some reason. And so 10 kids go in the stage and it begins. Monte Zonkalan and I know it is going to be so important to position ourselves well entering the climb, which is what I've tried to do right here. Sharma, try and protect Tobias. It's on, guys. It's on. 9k to go. This is the final showdown. So, classic PCM. Despite the good positioning, we were blocked quite heavily in the foot of the climb, and Hugh Carthy is on the attack. We're going to take it pretty slow. We have Kron to help us out. I'm not sure we're going to be strong enough to attack like Hugh Carthy is. What a rider. He is going after Tom Dumoulin today and his second place, and even Juan Ayuso. Let's see. But there goes Ayuso. He goes after Hugh Carthy. What a rider. Where is Dumoulin? He's trying to come up to Ayuso. The gap to Dumoulin is pretty big. 4 minutes 16. I think Carthy can overhaul him and now Dumoulin in our wheel with 2.8k to go. Guys, get out of the way, Sam Uman. Look at this. It's so frustrating. I can't tell you guys how frustrating it makes me. Ayuso and Carthy look to be challenging for the stage but can we now bridge with 2k to go let's try and lopez has cracked and mulan has cracked we are moving up in the gc today that is for sure but how much by is the question we are going to hopefully get now to the wheel of way so let's do that right here we're going to spend all our energy and sit in the wheel of the Maglia Rosa, who is about to win his first Grand Tour. Carthy trying to create enough of a gap to Dumoulin, but Sam Omen, what a ride by him today. We're not going to win on Monte Zonkalan, and rightfully so, that is going to go to none other than Juan Ayuso. He deserves it. What a performance for him at the Giro. He wins by an absolute mile, guys. Carthy seconds on the Zonkalan. I think we will be third, just ahead of Pale Bilbao. We'll move up in the GC, but we're not going to be on that podium. Well, 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 guys, the Giro d'Italia, the GC battle at the Giro d'Italia is over with a third place on Monte Zoncalan. But Juan Ayuso, like I said, he has been the dominant rider. What a super talent. He wins by six minutes in the end to Dumoulin. Carthy just behind in third place. We finish fourth place with Tobias. It's not an awful result, but missing out on a podium is a bit gutting, I can't lie. I really hoped and expected us really to get on that podium. But yeah, we weren't good enough. We simply weren't good enough. We had some race days in the final week. We peaked for that final week, but we were nowhere near the level of Juan Ayuso. But yeah, fourth place, it's a fair result. It's a top five at a Grand Tour and we can't complain about that. I think we will just about hold off Ayuso in the Chiclamino jersey. He wins the King of the Mountains as well as the White jersey. But at least we're going to win the team classification. And well, the Giro is about to come to a conclusion in Trieste with a sprint stage. One more chance for us to take one more stage. Let's go for it, guys. And so, 12k to go. We are in the final circuit now, and we do have the remaining three riders. The final breakaway of the Giro, including Pierre Latour, who has done absolutely nothing at this race, by the way. He's up the roads, and this is going to be brought in for a mass sprint. I may try to move Hal Vorsen to someone like Sam Bennett or Tim Malia's wheel. And that's what I've done. Hal Vorsen currently sits on the wheel of Sam Bennett. We'll see if that puts him in a good position. And Olav Koy has taken in the wheel of our train instead. Rasmus Tiller, though, I think could be the winner of this stage if we play our cars right. That car was parked there two laps in a row. Anyway, we have four and a half. Have you guys seen it? Have you guys seen it? There's there's five K to go. There's five K to go in the Giro. And Ayuso does carry on. Okay, I think he's safe in pink. Oh my word. That would have been some drama to end this magnificent race. But Andreas Kron trying to lead Rasmus Tiller into the final corner in the perfect position. Where is Hal Vorsen? I'm not quite sure. He's too far back to compete. But Rasmus Tiller could maybe go for the line. But so can Jasper Philipsen. So can Jordi Mayus. But Jasper Philipsen is going to win this one at a canter. What a win. Andreas Kron in third place, actually. Hal Vorsen was nowhere. And that should mean Rasmus Tiller secures his Chiclamino jersey. Where is Juan Ayuso? So the UE boys are going to sit up and wait for their leader. Of course, he has enough time in hand for this not to matter, but that could have been so dramatic. And well, that marks the end of an epic race. A race 
that was interesting that never quite lived up to my expectations in terms of our battle for the GC victory. Wano Yusso though, this was his coming out party. He lost three minutes on that final stage or close enough, but still has over three minutes in hand on Tom de Mulan in second place. Hugh Carthy third and Tobias is left five and a half minutes down. Was a lot more than that before Wano Yusso's crash on the final stage. How much time did he lose? Two minutes and 49. It literally didn't matter. Anyway though, Tiller did take the Chiclamino jersey. Love to see that big, uh, a big moment for him in his career. I also in the KOM jersey, the Young Riders jersey, and like I said, we do take the team, the Movistar classification. And overall, I think we took four stage victories. Hal Vorsen got one, Tiller got two, and then I think Hal Vorsen got another on stage 11, but no victories in the mountains. We really struggled in the mountains at this Giro and I built the team around the mountains which is where I wanted us to be strongest so really disappointing we didn't quite live up to expectations there despite some good performances sprinkled in just never quite got going in the high mountains and so Tobias adds a fourth place at the Giro d'Italia to his second place at the Vuelta Espana. He was nowhere in the Tour de France, of course, in his first Grand Tour, but second and a fourth place on his Palmares. And I think the Vuelta at the end of the season is his big goal and he is going for that red jersey, you better believe it. But now it is really time to turn our attention to Scalmosa and his chase for the yellow jersey. Are we dreaming? I think we probably are, but we are going to give Primoz and Tade our best shot and go for a podium or even the yellow jersey. Come on, Skelmosa, let's go for it. We've got the Dauphiné first. Before that, though, guys, a massive thank you for following along for this Giro. I really hope you enjoyed it just as much as I have enjoyed playing it. Hit like down below, smash. Let's go for 200 likes, shall we, for the final episode of the Giro d'Italia. Hit subscribe as well if you're new to this channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.